Greetings from higher ground, Tryon, North Carolina, Melrose Mountain. And uh, I want to ask you a question. What is your God like? What is your God like? Uh, I think some people see him as their co-pilot. I see license plate that say that. I hope he's really not. He needs to be your pilot, not your co-pilot. Some people see him as a little plastic character on the dashboard of their car. Some people see him as a uh, statue high on a mountain in South America. Some people see him as a booming voice, like uh, perhaps the Wizard of Oz. Some people see God as a vending machine. You put in enough of whatever the right stuff is, and he may give you back something out of the vending machine. Uh, some people see him as an angel of protection. Some people may see him as a king or a president. But how do you see your God? What is your God like? Well, it really brings us back to what happened in Acts chapter 17 with Paul in Athens. His spirit was being provoked because there were gods of all kinds placed all over the city. Idols. As a matter of fact, there was even one idol that said uh, that it was a idol to an unknown God. Imagine. Uh, they didn't have enough gods already. They decided they'd protect themselves. They'd make an idol to an unknown God, a God they didn't know. It's true. A lot of people see a lot of different kinds of gods. Paul had to deal with these philosophers and uh, these men of higher education, if you will, as they were trying to decide about gods and as they would debate just for the sake of debating. When they heard about Paul teaching about a strange deity, uh, somebody that had been resurrected from the dead, they wanted to hear more from him. And it was really quite interesting to see exactly how they wanted to see what Paul's God was like. If you look at chapter 17, beginning at verse 16, you'll find the story of Paul as he dealt with these philosophers of the day. Paul said, I see all kinds of objects of worship around here, so you must be religious. Uh, but I want to tell you, you've been worshiping in ignorance. You see, my God, he says in verse 24, is the creator of the universe. He's Lord of the heavens and the earth. Uh, he gives life and breath to everything that exists. He's far above all of the other deities that you might worship. And he's the one that has got a divine nature. Not like gold or silver or stone or images, uh, but he's a living God. He's the one that overlooks your time of ignorance. He's the one declaring to all people to repent. And he's fixed a day when he'll judge the world in righteous judgment. And he proved who he is by raising his son from the dead. Now, many of those that were listening that were philosophers sneered and ignored what Paul had to say. Others wanted to hear more about this God of Paul. In verse 34, it says, some joined in and believed in Jesus and believed in a sovereign God, a God above all gods, the true living God, not just idols and images, but a living God. What is your God like? Is he the creator of the heavens and the earth? Does he put life and breath in everything that breathes and everything that is? Is he the one who created the heavens and the earth? Is he the one that sent his son to die for you and for me, for our sins, the only perfect atonement for our sin? Is that what your God's like? 
not just a vending machine to give out good things when you do the right things, but a God that's with you day and night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, who cared enough about you to allow his son Jesus to die on the cross that you might have the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. That's my God. Is that your God? I hope you'll make him your God today. I hope that you'll realize that there is only one living true God and that he sent his son Jesus to die for us that we might have eternal life. And even here and now, we might have abundant life, life in Christ. See us through the difficult times. Be with us when we need him, but not like a vending machine. His amazing grace, his love for us, a true living God who proved by resurrecting from the dead the power over death and life. That's my God. That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.